Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. I am Imam Sadiq Jihad out of Michigan, intending to do a khutbah here today on uh, July, June 14th, uh, 2024. I begin now with what is known as the Adhan, that is the call to the prayer, the call of the Muslims to prayer, and God willing, the call to others to embrace Al Islam, the religion of the Muslims. And when I say Muslims, I'm talking about the religion of all people in the sense that God has created us all to be submissive to his will. And we know that Muslim is an active participle, meaning one who is submitting to the will of God. Jesus was a Muslim, a camel was a Muslim, a roach is a Muslim, etc. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala as-salah Hayya ala as-salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah. Translated for those who may not know what it means, that is the Adhan, the call to prayer. I said, God is greater four times. And for those of us who know something about the, uh, the language, we know that Allahu Akbar or Allahu Akbar is a shortened version of the entire phrase or sentence. God is greater than everything, that is, min kuli shay. We said it four times. And then we said, I bear witness that there's no deity but the one deity, God alone, twice. Then I said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, twice. And then I said, life is upon contact or prayer or devotion and worship to God, twice. Then I said, life, my life, your life, is upon the cultivation. Cultivation of what? The cultivation of the mind. Cultivation of this physical world, twice. And then we repeated, God is greater, twice. And then we concluded the Adhan with, there is no deity but the one deity, God alone. So I begin the khutbah with, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That is, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu an Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. That is, I bear witness there's no deity but the one deity, God alone, and there's none like unto him, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa lahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, wa huwa aliyul adheem. That is, Almighty God is free from all imperfection. He's perfect. All praise is due to Allah. There's no deity but what Allah, Allah is greater than anything you and I can imagine or do. So I begin the Qutbah by giving you the title, and the title that I have chosen is pretty much a rich title, and I hope I can cover at least most of what uh, the title is indicating. Abraham, Hagar, Ishmael, Ishaq, and the Hajj. Praise be to Allah. So I begin now by mentioning to you that in the Surah Baqarah, God mentions 
that Ibrahim and Ishmael built the foundations of the house, that is the Kaaba, the Kaaba in Mecca. And this is a cubic, a cube-like structure, if you will, that's draped in, in black. And as you can see, I have on black today, and black in most symbolic uh, references in, in the uh, religion has to do with two things. Number one, the innocence of the human heart, the black heart, that heart that uh, is innocent with no stain on it, that black heart that is in the wombs of our mothers in that triple darkness situation. No light comes into the, the womb of the mother that's carrying that, that amniotic sac that carried you and I for those 257 days or roughly nine months. So when this human being comes out in such that position, that is with the head down and the nose forward, it is in a state of purity, no defilement, pure and undefiled. So this black stone that's on the northeast corner of that house represents the purity of the human being coming out of the wombs of their mothers. Praise be to Allah. And so Ibrahim and his son Ishmael, they rebuilt the house or built the house. I, I can't tell you for sure if it's saying that they are the first ones to build the house, but we know that they had something to do with uh, its construction. And we know that from the Surah Baqarah, where Allah mentions the Abraham, as I mentioned, and Ismail built the foundations of the house. Praise be to Allah. And so, as you know, we are in the midst of the pilgrimage to Mecca. And on this coming Sunday, June 16th, the uh, Hajis, those who are making the pilgrimage, will come down from Mount Arafat and they will have their celebrations. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. And on that Mount Arafat, which is the mountain of knowledge, they are getting to know each other, as Allah has said in the Quran. All you who believe, I have created you nations and tribes, etc., so that you will not despise one another, but you will begin to know each other. And by knowing each other, perhaps we will appreciate each other better, God willing. So the Hajj, as I mentioned last week, is a journey to repair and to renew ourselves, fisa bilillah, that is in the cause of God and in the cause of devotion to God, righteousness. This is the point of the Hajj. And it's also a point to go there to visually see that all ethnic groups are represented in the Hajj as one human family. We're dressed in white to not distinguish any of the kings or so-called kings. When I say so-called kings, I'm saying that God tells us in the Quran that he is Malik and Nas, that is, he is the king of the humanity. So some will question, and I question it also, why is it that we have King Khaled or King Muhammad bin Salman and so on, and the king of Jordan and other places, they had the king of, of uh, Iran at one time, they called him a Shah. But at any rate, God should be the ruler of the human family. And if any leader props up or comes up and says, no, I'm the king, you do what I say, and regardless of what Allah has said and what Allah has revealed and what your righteous nature tells you, then you should dispel that particular person from your mind's eye as being a leader. So God says he is Malik and Nas. So continuing on, the uh, Hajj gives us the feeling that all of us are equal before God. And one of the things that's kind of interesting that the women, they don't wear the uh, all white as the men and they're not required to do so. And why, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we know that the men are wrapped in what we call ihram, that is the forbidden clothes, being in a state of forbidding. Forbidding what? Forbidding the action of doing anything that is wrong. We're symbolically coming forth in the white to represent the purity of our natures when we came out of the wombs of our mothers. Praise be to Allah. So continuing on, I'd like to mention to you 
a verse in the Bible, uh, Genesis 15, 13, I believe it is. And a lot of Muslims uh, today say, why are you quoting Bible? Well, I believe that there's some truth in the Bible, and we do believe also that there's some, some falsehood and some interpolation that is changing the words of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the Holy Bible, and a lot of it is obviously not in accord with the nature of the, the human being to do some of the things that are mentioned in the Bible. Anyway, they would tell us this during the time of Elijah Muhammad, where Ibrahim, Abraham reportedly said, know of a surety that thy seed will be afflicted in a land that is not theirs for 400 years. And I will bring them out. It is, this is Allah giving the message. And I will bring them out with great substance. And so we believe that this is referring to the Africans who were kidnapped from Africa. And we were, for sure, in a long period of slavery for over 400 years. And some might say, well, no, I was talking about the, the, the Hebrews or the Jews. If you study history, you will not find any people that is recorded in history who have been afflicted with servitude upon them for 400 years. So it's talking about us, African Americans, who were kidnapped, raped, and beat, and tarred, and feathered, etc., here in the hells of North America. But we also know that America has great things about it also. But the slavery, the slavery that we endured is the worst slavery that we know of that was ever inflicted upon human beings. You know, the so-called Jews like to talk about the, uh, the um, killing of six million Jews in, um, in Germany, right? But we know that probably many millions more than that may have died on the boats coming over here to this place. And we also know that we died and were killed and murdered and whatnot right here in America during the slavery time. And it continues even to this day that our life is not as precious in the minds of others as their lives are. So continuing on, we know that you and I, African Americans, are in the bloodline of Ibrahim and Hagar. And I have mentioned this more than once. We know that because Hagar was from Africa, from Egypt. And we know that Egypt is in Africa. I always like to make that uh, distinction because some people forget and they think about Cleopatra being a Caucasian type and so on when the pictures that they show and the other stuff that they show on the movies, etc. And so Ishmael, that is one of the sons of Ibrahim and Hagar, is a great, 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 whatever number of great grandfathers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are reports and writings that indicate that his father, Abdullah, was of a dark-skinned you, if you will. And we also know, that according to what the history reports have shown, is that Muhammad himself had a dark skin given his ancestry. But yet some of the Hadith literature said that he was fair-skinned, which is suggesting that he may have been high yellow or something, you know. But at any rate, I want you to remember, that is you African Americans who may be listening, that aren't Muslim, or are Muslims, the Prophet Muhammad and I and you, we have a blood connection through our ancestral line. Praise be to Allah. So this is not just the Arab religion. It's for the black Arab, which is us. It's for all people of all ethnicities. God says in the Quran, Kajakum minolahi nurun. No doubt has come to you all from Allah, a light and a plain book. Praise be to Allah. So let me mention 
another Bible verse, 22, 16 through 18 in the book of Genesis. And said by myself, have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because you have done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. This is the King James Version translation, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very important for you to know that Allah in the Quran reveals some of this story of Ibrahim and the sacrifice event. And before I go there, I want to mention to you that this Bible verse says, thine only son. So that indicates clearly that at this point when God got Ibrahim into this, you know, vision or dream, really, you'll find this to be a dream as I continue on, that his only son was Ishmael. I repeat, his only son was Ishmael because Ishmael was older than his son by Sarah, which came, I believe, it's 14 years later, I believe, according to Bible uh, uh, edition, if you will. And so this story is relating to Ibrahim and Ishmael. And we know that Ishmael and Ibrahim at some point was in the precincts of Mecca and they built the house. And God says in, in the Quran, so worship the Lord of this house. Not the house, but the Lord of the house. And we know the Lord of the house is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continuing now, we take you to the Surah 37, verse 100 and 101, where Allah reveals, Rabbi Hebli minasalihina fabesharnahu bigulamin halim. Ibrahim may do out to God. Oh my Lord, grant me a righteous son. So Allah says, fat. And so we gave him the good news of a boy, Ishmael, ready to suffer and forbear. Now his name Ishmael is not mentioned, but they put it in parentheses to, to let you know that this son that God is uh, bestowing upon Ibrahim is his only son, that first son, if you will, Ishmael, ready to suffer and forbear. And the word Halim is used because of one of the characteristics of this son. He was forbearing, he was patient, he was ready to suffer death at the knife of Ibrahim, his father. So continuing on, we find it in the next verses, that is 102, 37, 102, where God reveals, then when the son reached the age of serious work with him, he said, oh my son, I see in vision, this is how Abdullah Yusuf Ali translates it, and some of the other translators translate it that way also. But I know the word al manami Filmanami means in a dream. And if you know something about Arabic roots, you know that the root of this word, el manami which means dream, is naum. That's a lot to and naum. What does that mean? The prayer is better than sleep. So this vision that he got was while he was sleeping. Some will argue at this point, but if you know the words, you can check this out for yourself. El manami, fil manami, in a dream that I offer you in sacrifice. 
So he's telling you, and I that he told Ishmael, that I saw this in a dream. Now, see, what is your view? He's asking his son, should I bump you off? <laughs> that, that's, that, that's plain and simple language. The son said, oh, my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if our law so wills, one practicing patience and constancy. So continuing on, and by the way, in that particular uh, verse, it mentions the term that we say so often, inshallah. So he's telling his dad, you will find me if God allows me to, to have you kill me, patient and accepting of this, uh, this fate that uh, you think that God uh, inspired you to, to, to put on me. So when they both had submitted their wills to Allah, I'm coming to 37.103 now, and he had laid him prostrate on his forehead for sacrifice. For lama as lama, wa tallahu, pardon me, wa tallahu lil jabin, jabin. The minute when he had him ready to put the knife to him, Allah reveals 37104. Wa and yeah, Ibrahimu. We called unto Ibrahim. Like, don't do it. That's what Allah is letting you uh, you and I know. Don't do that. Then he says, Kad Sarak Sad Sad pardon me. Kad Sadak Kad Sadak Ta. Aruh ya inna kavalika tedzi tedzi muk mul pardon me tedzi muk sini gotta slow down a little bit surely surely you have already fulfilled the vision or the dream surely surely we reward those who do right but know too that Allah is indicating this over and over again in the Quran that he rewards the al muqsinin And he tells us that he loves the al muqsinin In Allah, you hit bull He never says in the Quran, surely Allah loves the believers, that, that is the al muqminina nor does he say he loves the Muslimina, the Muslims. Allah wants us to submit, then he wants us to be faithful and trusting of him, and he wants us to carry those two things into action and good deeds and righteous life. Praise be to Allah. So this same verse that I just recited to you, inna kathalika nedzil muhsinina, it's mentioned in the verse 110, without in that, and it goes, Kavalika Nedzil So Allah is emphasizing the fact that he rewards those who do right. Praise be to Allah. The next ayah 106 reveals, that is Allah, Inna hadha la huwal ba'ul. Pardon me. Bala'u. Inna hadha la huwa al bala'u al mubin. Or al bala'u al mubin. For this was obviously, clearly, a trial or a test. When we say test, understand that Allah tests us so we could see our own selves. Because He already knows what we're going to do. Like Allah foreknew that Ibrahim was not going to take that knife to Ishmael. Allah knew that this was a dream that Ibrahim had. And I'll give you more about what I think about this 
this dream and why Ibrahim had this dream. So continuing on. Wafadainahu be zibhin adin. And we ransom him with a magnificent sacrifice. Now, I have not checked out the Arabic uh, words in this particular ayah, so I'm just going to leave it and have you to maybe do some investigation of it. And I hope to do some investigation of the words on another situation myself. But we know that Zabiha has something to do with uh, slaughtering an animal in a ritual way that's approved of by Allah himself. So it may be referring to the idea of him slaughtering the, uh, the lamb. But at any rate, let me continue on. In the next ayah 37, 108, And we left this blessing for him among the generations to come in later times. And so beautifully Allah reveals Salamun alal Ibrahim. Peace and salutation to Ibrahim. And as I mentioned earlier, 37110, Thus do we indeed reward those who do right. And it goes on to let you know, let us know. Innahu min al Meaning, that is, for he was one of our believing servants, that is, Ibrahim. Again, in Nahu Min Ibadin al So, right after the story is coming to its conclusion, Allah reveals some props, if you will, to his brother, Ishaq. وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we gave them, that is, Abraham, Ibrahim, and Sarah, and, and uh, Hagar, and, and Ishmael, so did he, both of those were his wives, so they tried to make a Hagar seem to be a lesser wife and whatnot. But we know that having more than one wife was acceptable back in those days and it's acceptable even today. But there's limits. Today, according to the Quran, a man can have up to four wives, but he must treat them fairly and justly and equitably. And if he can't do that, Allah tells us in the Surah 4, marry only one. And we gave them good news, Isaac, a prophet, one of the Salihim, one of the righteous. So we are acknowledging Ishaq as a prophet of God. The Jews see him as a prophet of God, but they deny Ishmael. The Christians deny Ishmael, many of them. Many of the Christians deny Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the last of God's messengers. There is unity in the universe. There's unity in the prophethood. And it should be unity in the human family. But it's not. But we are working toward it and we should never give up. We should never give up. Praise be to Allah. And then the next ayah even further tells you about this hop. That is, tells you and I. And we blessed him and Isaac. But of their progeny are some that do right and some that obviously do wrong to their own souls. Wabarachna, wabarachna alayhi wa ala is haqa wa min duriyati hima muksinun wa dhalimun o wa dhalimul li nafsihi Mubin. The Quran verses reveal Ishmael was the son involved in Ibrahim's manami, el manami, the dream, in the dream. 
fill, um, fill my name in the dream of Ibrahim. Ishmael, who settled in Mecca, is known to be an ancestor, as I mentioned earlier, of Muhammad. And this is what I want to share with you very clearly, and I hope you register this. I am inclined, that is myself, to believe our Creator did not and would not command Ibrahim or any other person to wrongly assassinate anyone. God is not a murderer. It was our creator who stopped Ibrahim from the homicide dream. Just like he stopped Moses from thinking he could see God in a physical manifestation. I believe this, or suspect this, I should say. It appears that Ibrahim wanted to prove to Allah that he loved Allah more than his beloved son coming from his loins, Ishmael. We should never, I repeat in my view, we should never impute an evil action to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of his attributes is al barru the completely righteous being. That's a very important point. So if you want to believe that uh, God put it in his mind, I want you to kill your son. That did not come from God. That came from him and his love for God over his son. And you should have love for God over your son, over your wife, over your children, over everything. In fact, we have the law of priorities in the Surah 9, where God gives us the law of love priorities. If you bear witness, uh, bear with me for a moment, I'm going to get this particular ayah. I hadn't intended on saying this particular ayah or, or indicating this ayah in the khutbah here, but I think it's a very, very uh, essential uh, verse to know, and I do believe that uh, you should appreciate it, and I call it the love priority verse. The love priority verse where God is telling you and I what priorities we should have in regard to uh, living our lives. So hold on, I'm, I'm trying to go to it right now. Yes. Say, Allah is commanding the prophet to say, if it be that your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your mates, or your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce, that is the, the business in which you fear a decline, or the dwellings, talking about your mansions, your homes, in which you delight, are more love to you or by you than Allah or his messenger or the striving in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his command. Abdul Yusuf Ali says his decision. God is not indecisive, so putting the idea of decision into the uh, characteristics, if you will, of God is, is, is not, in my judgment, a good thing to do. God is not indecisive. He doesn't have to ponder and, 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 and figure things out. He knows already what he's going to do, and he is the professional doer, as Allah reveals, of whatever he desires, whatever he, he wills to be a reality. So God is telling you and I, if you and I put anything before him, that is Allah, and his messenger, and striving in his cause, then your priorities are not straight. Plain and simple. The love priorities to a nine verse 24. So let me go back to Ibrahim for a moment here. And remember, Allah is telling us, why is And remember that Ibrahim was tried by his Lord, referring back to what the story about him sacrificing his son. And remember that Ibrahim was tried by his Lord with certain commands which he fulfilled. And Allah's response to that fulfillment, he said that as Allah said, I will make you an imam to the nations. He pleaded, that is, Ibrahim. And also imams from my offspring. Like, hey, he wanted his son to be an imam. 
Ibrahim, I mean Is Ismail and Ishaq and their progeny, their offspring, etc. He Allah answered, but my promise is not within the reach of the godly mean. That is the oppressor, the evildoers, the wrongdoers. It's so beautifully that phrase, Inni ja'ilu ka'lin nasi imaman. This is the only time in the Quran that the term imam is used as a, a title. So this title imam means one who is a leader, one who is out front leading with what? The word of Allah. The word of Allah. That's why when we as imams make the prayer, we pray the words of the Quran. And then after the words of the Quran and the prayer is completed, we can make our personal prayer if we so choose. So let me just talk for a few minutes about Ibrahim after I do the close here. Rabbana at Mimlana Nurana Wakirlana in Naka Allah Kulli Shayin Kadir. Our Lord, complete our life for us, forgive us, for surely you have power over all things at all times. Allahumma nestainuka, wa nestak furuka, wa nutminu bika, wa natu akalu aleka, wa nufni aleko kaya, wa neskuruka, wa la nefuruka. O Allah, we ask for your help, we ask for your forgiveness, we believe in you, we trust in you, and we extol and exalt you in the best manner, and we are thankful to you, and we are not of those who are ungrateful. Praise be to Allah. And as you all know, most of the religious people that's following Al-Islam, Christianity, I, I would prefer to say the gospel. Why do I like to prefer to say the gospel? Because why would God name a religion after a human being? Well, he don't say we are Mohammedans. Christ was a messenger of God sent to the world, and we as Muslims are obligated to believe in Jesus, but we believe that Jesus was a human being, a prophet sent by God, and not a son of God. That's clear in the Quran, and God is vehemently against such uh, 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 talk. He says, desist from Trinity. He says, or reveals, how can I have a son when I never had a sahib tun? I never had a, a female companion. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus, or she was about to get pregnant with, with Jesus, whichever way you want to look at that, she says, how can I have a son when I have had no, no intercourse? This is her exact you know, idea in her mind. I can't have no son without intercourse. But at any rate, that's another story that uh, people wrestle with, and they're going to continue to wrestle with that to the day of judgment. So God also says that the mountains are about to fall down in utter ruin and the sky is ready to split. Why? Because they say that the beneficent, all-giving God has taken a son. So God is very strongly against you and I raising up partners with him. Even in the Bible language, it says, I am a jealous God. But really, jealous is not the, uh, the, 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 the right understanding of that from checking out some of the Hebrew words. He would have said, I am a zealous God. Like, I encourage you to have zeal and joy and devotion to me. Like, when you think about this creator, be excited, have a, have a zeal for God. But God doesn't have the characteristics of being jealous. He knows that if you worship other than him, or if we worship other than him, it's to our own detriment, to our own lack of growth and development and getting the best out of this homo sapien human being that he has created us to be. God wants us to be devoted to him and him alone. And that's why we're having the problems we have today because people have allowed human beings to be put into the seat of God in terms of being our COs. 
or d directors, and we have it clearly in the case of DJT. And y'all know DJT is, is trying to pull a, another coup d'etat and claim that uh, he's going to try to get that uh, 34 counts reversed. And he's working on uh, the uh, House Speaker to try to pull out a law to make it that the case could go from the state court to the federal court and then have him pardon himself. <laughs> That's what it seemed like they may be trying to, trying to pull off. But at any rate, uh, let me uh, continue. You should know that we regard Ibrahim as our father, our leader. And God says of him that he was one who joined not gods with God. And here's a beautiful verse about Ibrahim here in the Quran. Who can be better in deen or in a way of life, religion, than one who submits his whole self to Allah, does good, and follows the way of Ibrahim, the true in faith? For Allah did take Ibrahim for a friend. This is very, very important for you to pick this up, what I'm about to say now. They translate the word Khalilan as a friend. All right? And a friend is one who is what? Open to you. If you got dandruff on your, on your collar, hey, man, got that dandruff over there. You got a little food on your mouth, you know. Uh, maybe that's not a good thing for you to do, man. Try to give you good advice, open to you about what they feel or what they think, you know? That's what a friend is. So if you take the time, you don't have to believe Sadiq, if you take the time and look up the Arabic root, khala, that is kha, that's that K-H way in the back of the throat, and a double L, khala, khala, it means to be open, like a friend is, right? And also, has the idea of relating this word in the Quran itself to how God asks you and I the question. See how I open up the clouds and send down the revelation, send down rain. Rain is revelation, symbolically, metaphorically. So this word khala is, is like a gap or opening. So you should know that Allah is saying that Ibrahim was not his buddy, not his friend. God has no friends. God has people who devote themselves to him and they're open to him and he gives them guidance and revelation and understanding and so on and so forth. So this is a term that's called the hal condition. How did Allah view or see or know Ibrahim to be? He knew Ibrahim to be Khalilan, that is open to him. This is an adverbial structure. It's not a noun structure. He viewed Ibrahim as being wide open to him. And as a result of him being wide open to him, Allah gave him that beautiful, rational journey in his mind. And you know of the story how he looked at the, um, the sun Oh, I, should say, I think he might start it in the night. He looked at the at the moon. And he saw this this light. He said, "That must be my God." I'm not giving it in the right order. Cause I'm trying to rush. And it sat. He didn't see it in the daytime. And then he saw the sun and all of its splendor. He suspected maybe this is the God, you know. And then when it set, at sunset, he finally came to the conclusion after looking at the heavenly order and how it, it works that I worship the one who causes things to, to set and disappear. No, he knew that all of this in the sky is not the power broker or power brokers in the universe. It was Allah himself who was the maker and the designer and the al Musawir, that is the fashioner of this universe. So that's what you should see Ibrahim as being, one who was open to God. But on the human plane, a Khalil could be a, a friend who is open to you.
But hopefully that friend that's open to you, he, he should be wide open to God in order for him to be a show enough ace coon boom, as, as they say, a true friend to you and to me. So there's other words for friends. Sadiq is a friend. Hamim is a friend. But this Khalil is the highest friend, one who is open to God and open to you. And you know, as well as I know, that God commands you and I to call the people to this way of life. It is a command from God that we do this. So you should seek Ibrahim as not, as they call him, the Khalilullah, the friend of God, but the one who was open to God. And if you don't want to buy that, then praise be to Allah. But do some study and research of this word khala and all of the ayahs in the Quran where it's used. And I believe you will come to the same conclusion that I have come to. And Allah tells us not to be guilty of shirk in joining partners with him. So partner and friend is close to being synonymous, if you will, in the English language. So I hope I said something of value to you and of merit to you. And I pray Allah that uh, the Hajis will uh, receive uh, a great uh, blessing and uh, inspiration from God to uh, go straighter than what they did before they came and keep that desire and quest to get better and better in our devotion to the Creator. So we're having the Eid celebration, as I mentioned, and uh, we know that uh, this celebration is a, a, a happiness of appreciating the fact that Ibrahim had enough fortitude to obey the commands of God, or at least thought that he was obeying the commands of God, and God checked him and told him to slaughter the lamb. And so some will say, I've heard him watching him mention that he was telling them, don't slaughter a human life. I give you the, the uh, wherewithal and the ability to, to bismillahirrahmanirrahim and slaughter an animal, but don't slaughter human beings. Don't be a cannibal. Don't be a person who likes to just kill human beings that are in your way, as some of these uh, dictators do. Life is precious. All life is precious. And if you study the word nefs, it means something that is precious, like a, a precious gem. And you can kill a physical human being, but God makes it clear to us that the life after this one is better. In kuntum if you only, if you are only but new. So we believe that this soul of each and every human being will have its judgment, even if that physical body is blown into smithereens in a plane crash. God tells us that this soul will be there, and our records will be there in our right hand metaphorically speaking, on our left hand. But we say metaphorical from the standpoint that we don't believe as Muslims that when we go down to the grave, that this physical body that, that housed the mind of Sadiq or any other person is going to be raising up into the sky, coming up out of the grave and meeting Jesus. The Christians call it the rapture. Are you ready for the rapture is one of the questions that they ask. No, we believe that this physical body goes back to the earth and the soul of the human being, which is the non-physical reality, goes back to Allah. And we do believe that everything that is material has a ending point. So in concluding, I want to take you to Surah 50, the one verse that talks about the uh, soul, just a little bit, and I'll be closing. It came to my mind, and I think I would be helpful to you if I mention this particular uh, ayah in the Surah 50 entitled Kaf. That's the letter Q in Arabic. And it's very interesting for you to remember and know that there are 57 Qs in that particular Surah 50. 19 times 3 is 57. And these letters that preface all of these Surahs has something to do with being a multiple of 19. The Surah 19 has Kaf, Ha, Ayn, Ya, and Saud. You add all of those letters up, Kaf, Ha, Ayn, Ha, and Saud, divided by 19, 
It's even. Did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do that? A resounding no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. So let me get to this verse and we will definitely be concluding. Allah reveals, Qad alimna ma tankusul ardu minhum wa inadana hitabun hafid. We already know that it's Allah is telling you and I. We already know. When I say we, understand that this we is talking about the kingly we. That is Allah's we. God himself. And the processes and the agents and all of what he controls know this. How much of them, that is how much of the human being, the earth takes away. Yeah, the earth takes away the bones and the the skin and, the, and the, the gases and all of that comes up out of the body, the argon gas, all of the different gases that's in our bodies. So again, we already know how much of them the earth takes away. But with us is a record guarding the full account. In other words, the record is there even though the earth is taken part of you, that is your shell, away, our shells, away. So I say to you, Jumua Mubarakah. I didn't say Jumua Mubarak. That's incorrect. You don't believe me? Check out the Arabic grammar of Allah in the Quran itself. If a noun is feminine, the adjective should be feminine. And it don't always have a feminine T on the end, but in this case, we do have a feminine T on Jumua. Jumu'atun Mubarakatun would be the, uh, the uh, feminine gender of the word blessed. So again, Jumu'ah Mubarakat, or you want to say the whole thing out, Jumu'atun Mubarakatun. And then I add Wa'id Mubarak. Now Eid is a masculine noun. Eidun. And usually I spell it E-E-D. But I don't like to hear people say id. You go into the id or the e, e, id, id, id. I think they say id. Yeah, they say id. But it's id. It's an ayin. Aid. Something that repeats over and over again. A celebration that's repeated over and over again. And Mubarak is masculine as well as Eid. So if we say Aid Mubarak, we say Ramadan Mubarak. When it comes to Jumu'ah, it's a feminine word. And you can see why it would be feminine. The idea of a day where you are peaceful and compassionate and loving and uh, convivial, friendly, uh, all of that, and in Mubarakat 20. So I close. Rabbana la tuzikulubana ba'da iz hadaytana. وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابَ Our Lord cause not our hearts to swerve after you've guided us aright, but bestow upon us mercy from your presence, for surely you are the grandest of the givers. Amen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an muhammadan rasulullah, Haya la sola, haya la fala, kad the karmit is sola, kad the karmit is sola, Allah who akbar, Allah who akbar, la ilaha illallah. And now the two raqqa, raqqataini. Lillahi rabbil alameen, to the Lord of all the worlds. Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Our Lord, bestow upon us wisdom, unite us with the righteous, grant us honorable mention on the tongue of truth among the latest of the generations. Make us inheritors of the garden of bliss and joy and forgive our forefathers for many of them who are astray and do not let us be in disgrace on the day that you are raising us 
for the final judgment. Uh, me. That is in the sword 26, I believe, and it is, I believe, uh, a dua that uh, was given to Ibrahim, our father, our leader. I'd rather say our leader as opposed to our father. Praise be to Allah. The word for father in Arabic is Abu, Abu. It's not Abu, it's Abu. It's long, long time. Praise be to Allah. So I'd like to give a brief uh, uh, encouragement for you, if you are a student of the Quran, to purchase this book, The Concordance of the Quran, and there's other concordances that I have seen, but I don't really know if they're as compact, if you will, as this one. But this particular concordance will help you to look at all of the ayahs for various Arabic roots that are contained in the glorious Quran. To give you an example, Rahimah. That is, he exhibited mercy. So you want to find how many times Ar-Rahman is in the Quran, or Ar-Rahim is in the Quran, or Rahmah is in the Quran, you go to this concordance and you see all of the entries under that Arabic root R, H, and M. So you probably heard me say before that Ar-Rahman is in the Quran 100 and, pardon me, Ar-Rahim is in the Quran 114 times, and Ar-Rahman is in the Quran 57 times. So if you don't believe your brother, then you get your concordance and you can count them up. <laughs> But trust me, I try to give you anything that I know to be truth. And God willing, uh, I'm uh, successful in, in doing that. And lastly, I want to mention to you my book entitled Lugatut Tanzil, that is, The Language of Revelation. This is a book that I wrote back in 2008. And I would encourage you strongly to secure this book learn the Arabic alphabet and the sound system, and then go on to the book to learn the forms of the verbs and all of the different uh, things that will help you better understand the Quran. And I would encourage you to spend more time understanding the Quran as opposed to other literature. God says to us that this book is free from any doubt that you should entertain in your mind about its authenticity. So if you are a rational person, you would try to read that which is free of any admixture or any falsehood. Because sometimes books are written and some false ideas come forth that is against what Allah would have you or I to believe. So the Quran is the only book that I know of that we should believe in 100%. The Quran, straight from Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. So, if you are interested in this book, you can go to SadiqJihad.com. That's S I W D W E Q. And the last name J I H A D. dot com. Or if you like, you can send me an email, Sadiq S I W D W E Q at M S N. dot com, with your uh, address and. Uh, phone number and I can call you I guess you can give me the address over the phone but I could call you if you give me an email and a phone number and we can do a transaction over the phone through cash app or whatever so my cash app is Sadiq dollar sign Sadiq Jihad and I let the book go for $50 and that includes the shipping and handling $50 for the book again the Language of Revelation, endorsed by Imam Warfi Muhammad and others, and also endorsed by Sheikh Ali, Suleiman Ali, out of Ghana, Africa. He's here in Michigan, been here for a number of years, and he's a grammarian uh, that I know to be very, very uh, knowledgeable, and I don't recall any question I ever asked him about grammar that he didn't have the answer for. So I appreciate him, and I appreciate all of those who have been helpful to me in my sojourn here in this uh, this life. And we know, as Allah has revealed, the life to come is better for us. In kuntum ta'alimun, if you are only but new. So signing off here on this June 14th, 2024, again with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu wa jumu wa mubarakah wa aid mubarak.